dads and our Heavenly Father have in common. The list could be very long, and I'm sure that different people would come up with different things, but I think principally, in my mind at least, that there are four things that dads and our Father in Heaven have in common. Both in a normal situation of humanity, in a normal situation, a dad is there to love his family. Love covers a multitude of sins. And if you'll just love your family, love them with all your heart, with everything you have, somehow things just seem to always work out in the end. Love. To know the love of a father is a very important thing. I have never questioned that my mother loved me, that my dad loved me, and, and uh, I rejoice in that love. And uh, they decided only to have one child when they had me. Still trying to figure that one out. Maybe... Maybe I was so terrible as a baby that uh, they decided, let's don't do that again. <laughs> All right. Whatever the reason, I had the total love of both of my parents. I uh, did experience at age eight the divorce of my mother and my father. Both were Christians and both loved the Lord, always did. But uh, uh, things happened and uh, there was a divorce. And I always felt as a kid at age eight, I always felt like my life got better. Man, every other weekend I'd go with Dad, we'd get the company boat and go out on the lake. That was pretty cool. And we'd go have steaks. And Mom always took great care of me in every way. And uh, I just thought, you know, divorce is no big deal. And then one time I was watching a movie, and I was an adult man decades after the divorce, and I was watching a movie and watched a little girl crying, just crying, crying, crying in the movie because dad wouldn't take her with him as the mom and dad were divorced. And this old boy that thought he was never touched by divorce, uh, I just sat there weeping and bawling, crying for that little girl whose daddy wouldn't take her. And uh, I just want to tell you that uh, America is hurting today because of the loss of moms and dads together, raising the children, important key, in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. To know a dad's love, to know our Father in Heaven loves us, is vitally important in every, every aspect of life. A dad is there to protect. I, I used my best sermon illustration last week when I talked about Esther having a blood-curdling scream in the garage while I was in the living room on the sofa. I, I, with no thought for my own life, I went around the corner, ran out in the garage. I was going to take on the thief with everything I had. And I said, honey, what is it? And she said, it's a mouse. But I was glad for that moment because it let me know that in any situation like that, I would do the right thing and protect my own. Our Father in Heaven protects us. And if He didn't, you wouldn't be here. Our dads provide for us. The Bible says a man doesn't provide for his family is worse than an infidel. Come on, that's pretty strong. And I'm not talking about you have to provide every luxury of life or every current fad or trend to your family. That, those are not the important things. I, I have discovered, grandpas, that kids can do just well with a $2.50 big ball. I was out in California with my youngest granddaughter, Lucy, and uh, she was 13 months when I was there. And so I went to Walmart and I bought her as I bought the other two grandchildren. You have to do the same for all, you know. I went to Walmart and I bought one of those big blow-up balls about this big, about the size of a big globe, you know, and, and I gave it to her and that's all she plays with now is the big ball, 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 ball. So provision, you know, sometimes we buy something for our kids and they're more interested in the box than the gift. So, so the price tag doesn't matter. It is the care. Taking care of our family in a provisional way, make sure there's food and clothing and shelter for them, provision. And finally, I think the important aspect of dads and our Father in Heaven is, are they present? Are they present? Are they there for us? And how important it is to know the reality that our dads, our loving dads, 
hopefully Christian dads, know how to do these four things. They know how to love their family, protect them, provide for them, and that they are present. And oh, that our Father in Heaven, know that our Father in Heaven does those very things for us. Amen. Number one, there is the obvious passion, love, and care of our Father in Heaven. Aren't you thankful for the love of God today? Say it with me. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. 1 John 3, 1. Behold, I love that King James word, behold. It's better than, hey, look, see. Behold. It's an attention grabber, isn't it? And there is a manner of love of our Father that is unequaled. There's nothing that compares in this world to the love of God. And then a modern version uses the word instead of bestowed, it says lavished upon us. The Father hath bestowed, the Father hath lavished love upon us. And how do we know that? Because we have been called the sons of God. Thank God for his love. Furthermore, 1 John 4.10, herein is love. I like verses that just pinpoint the matter, say, here it is. Herein is love. Not that we love God but that he loved us. Why, why would that be important? Because we're sinners. Sinners in need of a Savior. Yet he loved us. While we were yet dead in trespasses and sins, the Scripture says, he loved us, and how do we know he loved us? Because he sent his own son, Jesus, into the world that we might live through him, through Jesus. Thank God for the love of God that saves us, sustains us, and keeps us in every way. Not only that, the obvious love and passion, care of our Father in heaven is that he knows our needs. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 32 tells us that your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. You have need of all these things. The psalmist said, I've been young, now I'm old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or begging for bread. Well, you can tell by looking at me, I've never begged for food in my life. I thank God for his provision in our lives. Raised then from age eight up by a single mother, I had five pairs of clothes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I had a couple of nice things for Sundays. That way every other week, you can see I didn't wear the same thing every Sunday. Mom would make a whole fried chicken. She'd eat the two wings, and I'd eat the chicken. But, you know, life is good. We're living in a perplexing age in this nation. But I'm telling you as a believer in Jesus Christ, life is good. We have the spirit of adoption whereby we may cry, Abba, Father. And our heavenly Father knows our need. The things that we need, he knows about them. And I'm thankful for his help in every area of life. Thirdly, he values his own. You know you're of great value to God. If you're despairing even of life, I want you to know that you're, you're very valuable to God. You are important to God. He gave you life and he gave it to you for a reason. Jesus has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And my, 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 would you please consider how valuable you are to God. Even the hairs of your head. Whew. I got a few. Even the hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value value, say value, more value than many sparrows. I don't particularly care for birds. My uh, stepmother, she loves to feed the birds. She just spends more on bird feed. I, I can't even begin to tell you how she loves and adores those birds. I have these uh, doves that settle on my chimney every morning at 5.30 a.m. Who, who? Who, who? I thought it was an owl. Just a little tiny dove that goes, who, who? So I go out there with my bucket of tennis balls and see how many of them I can hit. 
So far, I've never hit one with a tennis ball, but I sure have scared them away. We're of more value than many sparrows, and then I'm reminded, of course, that the birds clean up the planet. But God values us more than all of his creation. There's nothing that equals mankind of God's creation. You're valued by him. And finally, in this segment, point one, his obvious passion, love, and care, he cares for you. Would you tell your neighbor right now, God cares for you. God cares for you. If you don't know it, you need to know it. His loving kindness is better than life. His care for you has no limit. It has no end. God cares for you. I heard it as Pastor Jonathan was praying, 1 Peter 5, 7. I heard it as, as Robin Bartlett was singing the song today about his care because he cares. He cares for you. And we can cast all, all our cares upon him for he cares for you. For us. Years ago, I used to preach a message about people wanting to take their own life. In the many places that I preach that message on Sunday nights in revival meetings, in assemblies of God churches, there was never one time that there wasn't at least someone in the room that was contemplating taking their life. In a private way, very, very private way, we had an altar call where no one would know who that person was or those two persons or sometimes seven or eight persons that were despairing such, such of life that they were contemplating suicide. I'm here today to tell you God cares for you. In the worst day of your life, God is there. He's present, and he cares about your life, your eternal soul, your destiny, where you will spend eternity. God cares for you. And you can cast all your care upon him. I mentioned the tennis balls and the birds. I do have a bucket of tennis balls. I tried one of those flinger things that they used for dogs, you know, you fling the thing out there. I didn't even come close to hitting the dog like that, you know, or the birds like that. And so then I decided I'd, I'd throw it overhand, but I don't have the arm that uh, some quarterbacks have in the room that you could actually get it up to the top of that chimney. So I, I decided I'm going to start throwing that tennis ball up there underhand so I could get it clear to the top of that chimney. And uh, this worked out pretty good, but... The other day I got so upset about it, I went out there with my tennis ball in my hand, and I'm going to throw it under him. I'm going to hit that bird on that chimney. And somehow or another, I kept the ball in my hand too long, and it went that way. If I can't even solve the bird problem... Because you can't shoot a shotgun in Overland Park, you know. And I don't have a shotgun. But. And the neighbors are glad that you can't shoot a shotgun in Overland Park. But if I can't solve the smallest problems of life, what makes me think that I can solve the big problems of life? I need somebody that I can cast my cares upon knowing that he cares for me, and that is our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Number two, there is not only the Father's love, there is the Father's protection. The Bible says in Deuteronomy, and you have the notes before you there today in your bulletin, he thrusts out the enemy, Deuteronomy 33, the eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. And he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. I know we preached this verse just a couple of weeks ago, but it's so vitally important today. And the song that we led the service with today, leaning on the everlasting arms, what have I to fear? What have I to dread? Leaning on the everlasting arms. Thank God that the eternal God is, present tense, and always will be our refuge. Hallelujah. Thank God underneath are his everlasting arms. He and he alone takes care of the enemy. 
Not only that, in the time of trouble. He is the merciful God in the time of trouble. Psalm 57, 1 through 3. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Does your soul trust in God today? Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until what? Until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. In the time of trouble, our Father in heaven is our refuge. Praise God. You think the devil's a mean devil? Well, my God is a good God. And good has and always will triumph over evil. You can shout at that, amen. Good will always triumph over evil. In the end of this age, good will triumph over evil. Why? Because the Father is our refuge in time of trouble. He goes on with the thought of refuge, and this will be some of your favorite, uh, favorite psalm, and all the psalms would be Psalm 91, where the psalmist says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night or for the arrow that flieth by day. Verse 10, there shall no evil. Let's say this together. Verse 10, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Our God is our refuge. Hmm. The Bible says here in these verses that he'll deliver thee. Verse 4, he'll cover thee. And so there is no reason to be afraid. The thief, the devil, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy, if he had his way, you would be dead already. Hasn't happened. All the many times that your life has been spared when you knew it or when you didn't know it, God is there to protect your life. As a dad, as a grandpa of three, if any harm was coming to my children or my grandchildren, I'd take anything to spare them. I'd jump in front of anybody, anything, to spare the life of my children and my grandchildren, and so would you. Well, the protection of our Father is much greater than human protection, and He loves us. He is our refuge. And finally, 2 Timothy 4.18 the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me into his heavenly kingdom. What does the Lord's Prayer say that we talk about all the time? Deliver us from evil. He will deliver you from every evil work and preserve you unto his heavenly kingdom. So I preached a sermon the other week. It wasn't too long ago. And Rick Bartlett said, I feel cheated. We didn't get seven points. Sorry, Rick, there's only four points to this message, but there are seven sub-points right here. Number three, there is the overabundant provision of our God. The overabundant provision of our God. One of the verses that I have fallen in love with through the years is Genesis 8, 22. As long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. Thank God he takes care of us. Man, I don't know what the population of the earth was when I was born, but it's a few billion less than now. And even when I was in high school, they said, how can the world possibly take care of four, of five, of six billion people? I'll tell you how the earth does it. As long as the earth remains, I said, as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. Used to be global cooling was going to take us out. That didn't work. Then you use global warming. That's going to destroy us. And then it cooled off. 
And now it's climate change. Climate change is going to destroy the world. You call it climate change, I call it Kansas. The land of four seasons, brother. From day to day. In May there was too much rain. In June there's too much heat. But somehow, there's still enough pizza for all of us. And I don't even like pizza. There's a provision of our God in planet Earth. Thank God for it, and nobody's going to change that fact as long as the Earth remains. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 7 speaks of the children of Israel in the wilderness wanderings. Forty years they wandered in the wilderness. Forty years. Greatest miracle in the Bible. Forty years they wandered in the wilderness and those women only had one pair of shoes. I didn't get many amens from the women on that one. And manna was there every day except the Sabbath day, day of rest. And when they needed water, Moses just smite the rock. And when the water was bitter, just cut that tree and put it in that water and that water would be very drinkable. They lacked nothing. Well, I like a few things. I like a million dollars. Still waiting for my ship to come in. But they lacked nothing. I know Missouri lacks a national championship in basketball, but for us Kansas fans, we lack nothing. Every good and perfect gift comes from our Father of lights in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. We really lack nothing. Ravens fed Elijah at the brook. A widow's cake, the fat old prophet said, make me a cake. He said, this is all the meal I have, make me a cake, and she did. And the Bible says that her meal, her cake, the, the meal never ceased at the time of her need. Another widow, widow of a prophet. Prophet Elisha says, go get every vessel you can find. Go borrow it from your neighbors. And when the oil began to flow out of that small vessel, it filled every vessel in the house to the full, and then the oil stopped. Our God is a provider. There's the leper's plunder in Samaria as the Syrians had cut off the city and everyone was starving and four lepers decide, well, we might as well go out there. We're going to die of starvation. Let's go out there. And we go out there. Guess what? The Syrians had been removed by God and they plundered and they plundered, ate to the full and then went and told everybody else, hey, come on out. Everything is ready for you to take. The plunder was available. There's also Jesus who fed 5,000 with a boy's lunch. On another occasion, he fed 4,000 just because he's the bread of life. And so I think of this verse often, my God shall supply all my need. Say it with me. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Fourth point, Rick. His overshadowing presence. How many of you are thankful that God is with you today? Genesis 28 and 15, Behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken of thee. God's promise for Jacob, Jacob's ladder. I am with thee. I'll keep thee, I will not leave thee, and I will give you this land. Thank God he's promised not to leave us. Not only that, the Bible says that he does not slumber nor sleep. I think that should be the memory verse for every church service. 
Don't slumber, don't sleep. Hey, you know, if you can't sleep anywhere else but you can sleep in church, you should come to church. At least you'll leave rested. Law enforcement, government cannot protect you all the time. But our God does not slumber or sleep. I will lift up my high eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. He made heavens and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. I saw a newspaper article from the Middle East. And it was one of Israel's enemies saying, every time we send up one of our missiles, their God brings it down. Our God doesn't slumber. He that keeps Israel doesn't slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. How many of you know we need shade in this summer? Physical shade, spiritual shade. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Oddly enough, it's 72 degrees in my house right now. It's 72 degrees in January. It's 72 degrees in my house in June. The other day our air conditioner went out, it was 80. Thank God we had it fixed the next morning. All the comforts that we enjoy the blessing that we have. The Lord is thy keeper. He doesn't smite thee by day, the moon by night. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forevermore. Our God is our help and he does not sleep. He does not slumber. And finally, he has said, I am with thee. Would you look with me as we close this message in Isaiah 41 and 10? Fear thou not. Let's say it together. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. God is saying to you today, he's with you. He has never left, and he will never leave. Thank God for his passionate love and care, the love and care of our Father in heaven. Oh, how we thank God for his protection. Even the devil. Oh, that old devil must be frustrated that he can't have you. God watches over us, and the angel of the Lord encamps round about those that fear him. Thank God for the provision of God. Amen. He provides for you in every way imaginable. Hmm. Inflation. Anybody worried about inflation? Kind of irritates me. I open up my potato chip bag, the full size one. It's got five chips in it. You know I'm ticked off about the cookies. Used to be eight cookies per row, then it went down to seven cookies per row, and now it's six cookies per row. That's inflation, brother. <laughs> Maddening. Price of gasoline. All of these simply ridiculous. I can't even read the font on most things I pick up to read because some bean counter said if we make the font smaller, we'll spend less on ink. To those bean counters, I want to say, your day is coming. <laughs> but here we sit in the love 
the care, the comfort, the protection, and in, most importantly, we sit here in the presence of God. He's a good, good father. That's who he is. And great is his faithfulness. Great